Welcome in to the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by Zappos. It is game 10, and it's our first challenger of the year. Not a better place to start than the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association, gathering the best of the best to come in and take on the Savannah Bananas in our young sport of Banana Ball. Some sights and scenes from the pregame festivities so, so far. Johnny Damon fired up. Jesse Cole chatting with Gomzy and Michael Morse. It is an incredible way to kick off our first of 11 Challenger Series. 22 different Challenger games we'll have here on the World Tour as you now look above historic Grayson Stadium in our city by the sea, gorgeous Savannah, Georgia. A phenomenal night here on Saturday, March 11th, for a historic battle between the Bananas and the MLB PAA. Biko Scala alongside Josh Tulevsky, so excited to bring you this really momentous game, this tremendous show ahead of us. We could seriously jump out of the booth. Josh, quick summary of your feelings about tonight's ball game. Uh, Biko is a lifelong baseball fan, just growing up, just being one of those baseball junkies, somebody who had to read every single baseball card that I got in possession of. I mean, it's just a dream come true to have former major leaguers come in here and you know, be willing to play our game of banana ball, have a little fun, and just really show the world that this sport, there's really nothing like it. It's the greatest show out there. You can see the bananas getting fired up right now. The players, the former MLB guys, are absolutely ecstatic and are fully bought in. They will be a pretty good equivalent to the party animals. The bananas at party animals, four, four, and one through nine games. Couldn't have written a better script thus far. And now let's dive into the opponents of the Nanners tonight because we have uh, 10 guys as, as far as, you know, a banana ball lineup hitting. And we're gonna just start that way. Daniel Descalzo. A, a St. Louis Cardinal and one of the bigger hits within the past decade. Let's lay it out for Joe Buck. What a score. The Cardinals are tying up. Descalso with a sharp ground ball off the glove of Ian Desmond, and we have a new ball game. Okay, no Joe Buck on the call. We'll hear from him a little later, but we've got showdowns if games don't get to extra innings. And I think this next clip from Daniel Descalzo, the shortstop tonight for the MLB PAA, will show you that he'll be ready for a showdown should it come to that. Descalzo, he drives one deep right center field, and it's off go, the base of the go, 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 go. It's rolling back toward left center to Scalzo right home, and he will score standing up. And now, Biko, we've got to talk about the guy batting second, a guy who is familiar here in Banana Land. It was Johnny Damon who graced us with his presence in Daytona. And we take a look at Johnny Damon and his performance in Game 7 of the 2004 ALCS. Damon hits it in the air to right field. Sheffield back in the corner at the wall. A grand slam. Johnny Damon. Quiet. There's All Joe Buck. All right, cut it, deep. cut it. Get out of it. Four Get out of it. This is one of the worst moments of my entire it. life. Kill the oh, video. Okay, Biko, I think we've got one that'll suit you a little better. We've got a Yankees Damon clip. Check out what he did against the Royals back in the day. And the 1-0. That's driven to right field and deep. Going back is Gihan looking up. It's going to be off the wall. And Damon... We'll go into second with a double. Get this leadoff hitter out. Line drive, base hit. Damon has been on fire. As a base hit, that'll tie the game. Melky Cabrera will go to third. Cano scores. RBI single for Damon, his third hit of the game. How about Johnny Damon? Four hits. He's going for a double. Will he get it? No, he will not. Jose Guillen has an arm. That's his second assist. Line drive. Five for five in a 10-10 game. 
Two run single for Johnny Damon. And the three one. Driven down the right field line. That could go. It's going to be off the wall. It's going to win the game. The Yankees come all the way back. Johnny Damon with his sixth hit of the game drives in better meat. And the Yankees win 12 to 11. Bedlam in the Bronx. Sorry to Joaquin Soria. Thank you to the control room for uh, calming my soul after watching the 2004 highlight. Now in the three hole, John Buck playing first base. Our video that we had for him a three homer day back in 2010, his lone all-star season in Toronto has some gremlins in it, but it's really exciting to see the big man uh, hitting third for the MLB PAA. Yes, super exciting. Mostly a catcher for most of his career, but he's gonna be manning first base for the MLB PAA tonight. And yeah, a great career for John Buck started out as the Royals catcher and then once he hit Toronto in 2010 like you said an all-star for them three home runs in one game had stints in New York Miami a couple other spots as well just a really solid career from John Buck yeah, I was talking to Heath Bell earlier today, and Heath said, every time someone goes to Toronto, they become all-stars. He wants to do a study on it. I don't know. We'll see if the big guy does it. More on Heath later. Uh, Johnny Gomes hitting cleanup. Let's go back to his 2013 World Series three-run bomb against the Cardinals in game four. Two on, two out for the Red Sox. There's a drive in the left. Back at the track, at the wall. Johnny Gomes has hit a three-run home run and put the Red Sox on top, four to one. Yeah, Johnny always as clutch as it came in the MLB career. Now let's flash back a little later on in his tenure in Major League Baseball to a three-homer day uh, when he was playing for the Cincinnati Reds. And I'm sorry, Colin Ballister, for the first two. 3-2. Oh, this hit a ton. Well, that's not tense. That's intense and in the upper deck. And George, how many quality pitches did he foul off from Ballister? Wasn't easy. How about this? Left field, if it's fair, forget it. That is gone. A rocket shot off the bat of Johnny Gomes. In the air to center. Going back, Padilla at the wall. It is gone. That's three for Johnny Gomes. What a night. Oh, oh, oh baby. Unbelievable. Did I say later? I meant about three or four years earlier. Anyway, let's forget that. Now to the five hole in Michael Morse. Yeah, Michael Morse batting fifth for the MLB PAA. Spent a lot of time at first base and corner outfield, but he's manning the hot corner third base for the MLB PAA. And let's take a look at what Michael Morse did en route to helping the Giants win the 2014 World Series. See Duffy with a helmet on in the dugout. He would pinch run if Morse gets on the 1-1. One, one. That's him! Yeah, I mean, you talk to Michael Morris, he'll tell you that was the biggest swing of his career. But I think one of the more interesting swings of his career came when he faced off against the St. Louis Cardinals when he was a Washington National. Take a look. And Michael will hit it off the end of the bat and get some great carry to it. And that ball hits the top of the wall. It is in play. Uh-oh, now we've got a backup on the bases. Michael Morse heading back to first. He's going to be tagged out. They want to make sure Michael Morse touches all the bases. This is awesome. He's running backwards to touch all the bases, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Michael Morse, has he got to go back in the batter's box? 
There it goes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Right field. It is deep. <laughs> See you later. Grand slam. The Nationals are on top by four. That is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Shout out Bob Carpenter there. Okay, now to the six hole. Billy Burns. He didn't get the inside the parker like Daniel Descalso did, but seven eighths of the way there, I think he's a good candidate for showdowns as well. So here's Burns. Six in a row retired by Colby Lewis, and that one is fair. And it rattles around in the bullpen. It settles in the bullpen, and Burns is going to head to third. He's got a chance to go, and he is going to be set. The throw to the plate is there, and now Burns is in a rundown. But Bobby Wilson didn't know he stopped. He spun around ready to tag him, and Burns stopped and went back to third. Okay, we've got another really fun Billy Burns video coming, but first, the entire MLB PAA team has taken the field, and we have a child, a child trying to hit a home run on them, and I would be remiss if we did not see this. So we'll resume the uh, MLB PAA starting lineup in a bit, but for now, we've got to check in down on the field because we've made contact. The ball is in play. Alex Wilson after it. The throw towards John Buck is wild. Luis Montanez having trouble with it as our kids get into second base. He overthrows Descalzo. Now Johnny Damon buffs it. Our kids go into third. Flip from Descalzo's offline. Michael Morse hits the ground. Now the throw home. Cut off by Wilson. The throw over Vava's head. It's a dinger. Miraculous. You do not see that every day. Okay. We're going to stick down on the field because we have an incredibly exciting promotion coming in. After our weigh-in, well, after you hear the rules, there will be a weigh-in, and, and we just cannot miss that. Ladies and gentlemen, 
gentlemen, direct your attention down the right field line. It's time to meet the cast. Oh my goodness, that was a sight I never could have imagined in my life, but I'm so happy I saw it. I, you know, you never know what you're going to get here in Banana Land, and I, I did not expect uh, red, white, and blue overalls, that's for sure. I think Heath Bell got a better ovation than the hometown kid, Dan Oberst. Okay, back into the lineup. One more thing for the six-hitter, Billy Burns. Clearly, he is one with nature. <laughs> we killed the audio on this. Uh, a praying mantis and perched on top of his hat. I'd love to see him play like that tonight. Okay, to the seven hole we go. At second base, Luis Montanez, the third overall pick back in 2000. And how about this? His first ever at bat? You just got to see it to believe it. It's much like the other guy. And look at this, Luis Montanez, his big league debut hits a home run. Are you kidding me? How about the Orioles rookies? Wow, and his first major to get bat, we didn't have a chance to talk about him. And he's circling the bases. Wow, the O's, they've got some young stars. We're in the eight hole. Brian Barton, couple years with the St. Louis Cardinals. Let's take a gander at some of his more memorable highlights in his two seasons in St. Louis. That is one of his two home runs, the one that was at home, the other one in enemy territory. Now a little double down the line in Fenway Park. Two bags for the price of one. But he's not content with just second base. Let's give this man third. Always known for his speed. He swipes it, and then a collision with Rick and Keel, a banana, back in West Palm Beach. What's Absolutely. Albert Pujols doing? Why is he there? Oh, he drove in Brian Barton. Surprise for Mr. Tulevsky. Okay, who's in the nine hole, buddy? Yeah, the nine hole tonight, it's gonna be the backstop, George Kataris hailing from O Canada. And Kataris went to the Milwaukee Brewers, and you've got to see what he was able to do against the Astros. That was in five. Kataris to right yeah. and out of here. Like a laser, Kataris gives the Brewers a 2-0 lead. And he hits it a ton to center field. Bourgeois on the move all the way back. And against the wall, Kataris will go into third with a stand-up triple. My goodness, are you kidding me? And Council to right. Here comes Green to the plate, and he will make it in an RBI. And Green able to score easily from second base. How about have a night, George Kataris? So Kataris an opportunity here, and he lifts it. Again, straight away center, and it bounces over the wall for a ground rule double, and George Kataris has a cycle. Wow. Oh, baby. Kataris behind the dish tonight. I would wager he swapped spots with John Buck at first base probably about halfway through the game. Okay, in the 10 hole, Ben Kozlowski. Couple outings for the Texas Rangers, but most notorious around here for catching Tanner Thomas's foul ball as a fan for and out just a couple weeks ago. Single and a homer. Two runs scored and a stolen base. And that one popped toward the fans. Could be caught for an out. Uh, and oh, it is! It. He caught it. Let's go. Oh my goodness, Tanner Thomas pops out to a fan. Oh. Heck of a play by that guy. Okay, you have the starting lineup. Who's on the mound, Josh? Yes, yeah, starting tonight, it's going to be Jeremy Guthrie, really great pitcher, prominent, or mostly with the Orioles and the Kansas City Royals. And you got to take a look at what Guthrie was able to do, earning his first complete game with Kansas City. For Akron. Right center field, Frank Coor is there, and Jeremy Guthrie has thrown his first major league shutout. 
coming out of the pen behind him, one of my favorite people I've met in my life, Colin Ballister. Roll the tape whenever you can, because we're going to talk over this one. Uh, the first thing we show from Mr. Ballister is certainly not his most memorable moment in Major League Baseball, but one of my favorite things that I've seen any of these, any of these guys do. Uh, and, and when you see it, you'll know why. Of course, you don't see it, so now you do. Dynamite, oh, whoopsie doozy. Chris Berman would say, whoop. Tush finds the turf. Not a balk uh, in banana ball, not a balk in Major League Baseball because both his feet weren't touching the rubber. Okay, but he was actually a very successful pitcher over a handful of years for the Nationals. When we get you this next video, we'll show uh, a lot of the happier moments from Mr. Ballister's career. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, a little later on tonight, we're definitely going to see him moving and grooving on the mound. But this is where you see some of the stuff. This is the kind of curveball that drops right, right off the face of the earth. The heater to back it up as well. The big bender is nasty. A lot of rise on the fastball. Uh, he lineup. was He's a strong. very productive Major League Baseball pitcher for a few years and represented the United States. Getting some guys out facing Team Taiwan. Gets the ball taken by Bruce Bochy. Uh, he's been a, a really phenomenal pitcher, and he's going to be boogieing later on tonight. That's going to be really fun. Now, Alex Wilson is the next guy out of the pen. Uh, spent a few stints with a handful of teams, but I think the most notable thing that we came across was a three-pitch inning that he had when he was with the Tigers pitching in Cleveland. And it's an inning that Josh is going to be diving into uh, a little later on tonight with some MLB PAA banana ball uh, style stats. So it's going to be fun. But for now, let's take a look at the three pitch inning. It'll lead it off. And Uribe hits the first one right back up the middle. Kinsler is there, one gone. Heading played perfectly. Taking out Ramirez and Gomes with the bases loaded. Another ground ball. This one hit right at Kinsler. Hmm, two pitches, two outs. He swung. Driven to right field. How about that? A three pitch inning. Are you kidding me? I should have taken your bet. You should have taken the bet. Man. Very rare that you'd see that. Okay, you saw him on the way in a little earlier. Now, Josh, I'll set the scene for Mr. Heath Bell. <laughs> yeah, Heath Bell, I mean, you want to talk about a guy who already, I mean, we saw him come out in the red, white, and blue overalls, but really great closer for the Padres. <laughs> and you look at the 2011 Major League Baseball All-Star Game, the cameraman couldn't even keep up with Mr. Bell running in, and oh, he hits the power slide. <laughs> I mean, this guy was electric every time he came out to the mound. One of the funniest men in baseball during that early 2010 era. I mean, that's an absolute tank out there. You don't <laughs> mess with a guy like Heath Bell. 235 pounds when he played. The young professor said he weighed 310 tonight. I question that, but I'll let it slide for now. Okay, on to John Doherty at 55 years old, second oldest man on the team. Let's take a look at a complete game he had for the Detroit Tigers, the team he's representing tonight. And this will end the ball game as Whitaker takes it off the dirt and throws him out. The Tigers have won four in a row and seven of their last eight. Last but certainly not least, Orestes Destrade, the true elder statesman, 60 years old. Roll the tape whatever you can because starting lineups are about to be announced. Destrade, that's in Japan for the Cebu Lions. It's out of here. We've got a few more highlights when he was with the Marlins. Cut him. Forget it. Oh, hey, Dusty Baker in his first year as a manager. Okay, let's get down to the field. The lineups are being announced. Enough of time here in the booth. A two-time World Series champion representing the Kansas City Royals, number 18, Johnny Demon! Left fielder number seven, Michael Vitamin T! A 2010 American League All-Star from the Kansas City Royals, number 14, John Buck! Right fielder, number 18, Danny Hosley! 
a two-time World Series champion, representing the Boston Red Sox, number five, Johnny Gold! Ryan Pass! A 2014 World Series champion, number 38, Michael Morse! Representing the Oakland Athletics, number one, Billy Burns! <laughs> Representing the Baltimore Orioles, number two, New Montanez! Sabrina Patel, excellent work on the national anthem. We are just moments away from the most historic banana ball game in this young sports history, the 39th banana ball game of all time in the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association. Kicking it like the Rockets. Fired up and fully bought in to take on the bananas, our first challenger. 
of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by Zappos. And now the true show begins. We've set the stage well over a century of Major League Baseball experience combined between the 16 players from the MLB PAA. And they take on the Bananas, who on the tour thus far are 4-4-1 four, four, and one against their lone opponent on the season up until now, the Party Animals. We will see a few Party Animals aiding the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association tonight. Jake Lealios and Brett Helton on the pitching side. Breland Almodova and Tanner Thomas on the offensive end of the spectrum. There will be a couple pinch runners for guys who don't run as well when it comes to the former major leaguers. And there's a chance we'll see Lealios in relief if they run out of arms. It's going to be a tough task for the MLB PAA to get good lumber on Mr. Electric. Christian Dearman. It's his fifth year as a banana. Three collegiately, a 2021 Coastal Plain League champion. Now in his second stint as a pro. Dearman, the 2022 tour leader in ERA. In 14 innings pitched across three starts, a 5-1-4 earned run average thus far. And a formidable foe in the box, Daniel Destal Escalzo takes a fastball for strike one and we're underway. Two hour time limit in banana ball. Remember, if you miss what the young professor said about the nine rules that transforms baseball into our young sport, Every inning counts. So if you win an inning, you get a point. Descalzo thinks about trying to steal first base. And it was a wise decision to stay put. Six-year banana Bill Leroy had that ball ricochet right back to him. And a check swing towards the banana's dugout. And it's going to be a good fight from Descalzo. you got to be wary on any kind of foul balls here that it does not end up in the stands. If a fan catches it on the fly, it's an out. Cutting a foul tip into the middle of Leroy. And Dearman in his only challenger series start thus far. It was against the Kansas City Monarchs last May. He started his night by striking out the side. Three former major leaguers. <laughs> Johnny David, surprised by the Bananas, who say that he's got the best keister in the league. Shout out Fever Pitch, my hometown guy, Jimmy Fallon. That ball is bombed, but foul down the right field line. If it was fair, it was a homer. The major leaguers were hoping Vincent Chapman would say that it was fair. It looked like it was hooked foul, maybe a little closer than I called initial, no, initially. <laughs> Damon played for the Bananas in Daytona in the third game of the tour a few weeks ago. Now trading the yellow for the Royals blue. Taps that one to the right side. Dan Oberst glove flip to Dearman. And Johnny who grounded out against Jake Lealios when he was playing for the Bananas against the Party Animals. Bounces one to the other side of the diamond. Dearman won't have his second career strikeout of the side of three former major leaguers. At least not yet tonight. Now John Buck, the first baseman. A menacing man in the box. Six foot two, every bit of 240 pounds. Was sending balls over the walls here in historic Grayson Stadium with ease. Ballpark that's been here since 1926. Rebuilt into a baseball stadium in 1941 after a hurricane. Seen nearly a century of professional baseball here. 
Deerman with a trick pitch and Buck ready for it. Squares it up, the 2010 All-Star. With stints with the Royals, Blue Jays, Florida and Miami Marlins was there for the city change as he's fooled by the hesitation. Bill Leroy trying to chase him down. Can't do it, good wheels on the 42 year old. And Deerman impresses early. Two Ks and a ground out. One, two, three, go the MLB PAA guys. And now the Bananas just need one run to walk off the first inning. In the K-Club check, Ryan says, and here we go. Benjamin says, this is gonna be fun. Todd fired up that we've got two Detroit Tigers representatives. The fans fired up that we've got T-shirts being sent in the direction for free. Now you take a look at Jeremy Guthrie on the bump. A really terrific pro. Across 13 years of Major League Baseball, three in Cleveland, five in Baltimore, split 2012 with the Rockies and Royals, and then finished up 2013 through 2015 in Kansas City, took home the championship at the end of his stint there, popped over to Australia, spent parts of 2016 and 17 pitching for the Melbourne Aces in the Australian Baseball League and then came back for a swan song in 2017 with the Washington Nationals. And he starts Eric Jones off with a quick 0-2 count. The Bananas extra hitter because we hit 10 in Banana Ball so you get an EH and a DH. Not fooled at all by the off speed from Guthrie. Sends it right back where it came from. Jones, an excellent hitter, only hitting 238 on the tour thus far, but it is young. And Dan Oberst, the first baseman, takes ball one. We'll say for Eric's, well, we'll get back to that. Bounce to the third, Mike Morse can't handle it. Above his head, it's gonna go as an E5. Malachi Mitchell pinch running for EJ. Scoots on up to second base. I will say for Jeremy Guthrie's part, he's pitching awful quick here early on. Danny Hosley gets a walk up to the plate with the assistance of the Banana Band, and Jeremy Guthrie doesn't care. He's in the box, so he's gonna be pitching. Malachi takes off for third, cut and a miss, and no throw from George Kataris. Malachi six for seven on the tour, now seven for eight in stolen bases. And the inning winning run 90 feet away. Heck, oh no, I thought it was a heck of a stop for Kataris, flip to Guthrie. The ball gets away, and that's it. The inning walked off just like that. Single, an error, a stolen base, and a wild pitch. And the banana's up one point to zip. The madness of banana balls. You take a look at the flip to Guthrie, who baseball instincts kicking in. Scampered after the ball, still with the man out there on the bases, but that didn't matter. It's a one nothing win in the first inning for the Nanners. Life comes at you fast in Banana Ball. We've got a sing-off going on here in Grayson Stadium. Jesse Cole on one side. The young professor, Mr. Matt Grafer on the other end. Now you take a look at our historic ballpark from the Banana Panorama. Over 4,000 fans crammed in here. Besides for some season ticket holders, everything is general admissions. The wild, wild west when it comes to a Banana Ball game. 
This is the 196th straight sellout of historic Grayson Stadium. It's going to be Johnny Gomes, Mike Morris, and Billy Burns due to swing it off Christian Deerman as the fans do their best Bon Jovi impersonation. And Bill Leroy conducts the Prince of Banana Land, pride of Dublin, Georgia. Right at home in his adopted home. Been here for the past six years. Catrissa Ballet, welcome to being a BTV member. Appreciate the donation on the YouTube. Thank you to everybody watching as we are quickly into the second inning. Bill sees if Johnny's gonna try and steal first, something he actually did do in Kansas City when he made his Bananas debut last May in the Challenger Series, playing for the Nanners. Stole first base, got a one base sprint, got a base hit. The full banana ball experience, it takes the front door bender right off of him. No problem for Gomzy. The pride of Petaluma, California, now a Scottsdale resident. Takes over first base, first base runner of the night for the MLB PAA. Fourth batter hit in four starts on the tour for Deerman. And Michael Morse serenades the crowd. A little take on me. Finds himself a sword, and he's back ready to rumble. High fly ball, deep to dead center. D.R. Meadows back, and just on the track makes the catch. Morse experiences the cavernous Grayson graveyard. The 13-year MLB vet at 40 years old tests the limits of our 97-year-old ballpark. Learned how unforgiving it is to hitters. We've seen two homers to dead center on the tour thus far, but that's, that was across three games here in Grayson, which is honestly an insane pace based on my previous three years of broadcasting for the Bananas. Now George Kataris, check that. Billy Burns, the center fielder. Squibs that one towards second. Dalton Malden flips to Cox. Bare hand throw to first in time. Schnazzy 4-6-3 double play to get the incredibly speedy center fielder. And the Bananas are set up once again. One run will win the second inning. As you look at that one again, awful close. Chris Walker, I think, actually made the right call. Bang, bang, looked safe from up here, looked out on the replay. We'll throw it down to Jesse Cole for the world's slowest race.
an assist there from the Players Associations. The Players Alumni Association at that. First baseman, John Buck. And a win for Adina. A riveting world's slowest race as per usual. The Bananas won the first inning with just two batters up. Base hit from Eric Jones right back up the middle on an 0-2 bender from Jeremy Guthrie. <laughs> now, 1-0 pitch. Was hoping to start the count 0-2 against, or 0-1 rather, against Michael Deeb, the Nanners left fielder, who bounces that to John Buck. Flip to Guthrie. Good PFP from the two men representing the Royals. Two pitches, one out. Now Danny Hosley, the right fielder, last night's hero, showman of the night. One for two at the dish with a double. Pitched a scoreless top of the ninth inning. Got a showdown shutdown in round two of showdowns in what was a 2-2 game at that point. Striking out Dalton Cornett, the best hitter on the tour thus far on three pitches, and then won it at the plate in the bottom half of round two. Shot out to left field, was able to beat the wrap from Brett Helton. Bounces that one to short. Backhanded by Daniel Descalzo across the diamond. And Jeremy Guthrie finding a groove here in the second. Now faces Ryan Cox, the shortstop for the Nanners. Pride of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. The glove magician. Comes in hitting 259. And bounces that to Buck, backhanded. Flip to Guthrie. And an easy breezy one, two, three frame. Just what the MLB PAA needed. A scoreless second inning, still just a one nothing lead for the Bananas. And we'll throw it down to Maceo and the boys for tonight's player dance. led by Maceo, the dancing first base coach, Kyle Lewis, Malachi Mitchell, Vinny DeRubius, and Alex Ziegler there to join in him on the choreography. Dearman out for his third frame of work. He's got 7-8-9 in the MLB PAA order. Luis Montañez, the second baseman. Third pick of the 2000 draft by the Baltimore Orioles. Spent three years for the O's and finished up with the Cubs in 2011. The pride of Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Starts dancing with Deerman and well out in front of the slider. Christian gets his third strikeout of the night. And Vincent Chapman with a little twerking and jiving with Montanez as he exits stage left. Now Brian Barton, the right fielder. Can't catch up to the heat and all of a sudden, the Bananas have aligned, ready to boogie. Tell me what you want, Mr. Dearman. 
Malden, Cox, and Meadows getting into it as well. This is a good boogie. Oh my, a lot of steps to it. Bart impatiently waiting and gets the pitch. It's live to center field, it's big time trouble. DR can't get to it, it splits the left and right fielders. Brian Barton digging for third. It is a triple for the two year St. Louis Cardinal. First hit of the night for the MLB PAA. He had to wait about 30 seconds for the guys to finish dancing and he was ready for the heater. And at 40 years old, burning it around the bases. Short swing, not trying to do too much. Bananas bring the corners in, middle infield at half depth for George Kataris, the catcher. Pride of Scarborough, Canada, 39 years young. Now with the one two count on him. And it's through the right side. The MLB Players Alumni Association is on the board as Barton scores, and look at this boogie. The boys are kicking it. Big celebration from the former major leaguers. They lead the third inning, one nothing. Still trail the game one point to zip. They're not done yet. Jeremy Guthrie will have his work cut out for him. Christian Deerman still needs to get two outs to try and limit the third inning damage to just the one run. Ben Kozlowski, the extra hitter in the 10 hole. St. Petersburg, Florida native, now resides right here in Savannah, just a few minutes away from the stadium. I mentioned it on the pregame show. Two games ago here in Grayson, he was off the third base line and caught a Tanner Thomas foul ball for an out. One of the two foul balls caught by fans for outs on the tour as Breland Almodova pinch runs for Kataris over at first base. Our first party animal inserted into the ball game. Gives the MLB PAA a little extra juice. Wow. That one called strike three on the inside corner. Fourth K of the night for Mr. Electric. Kozlowski didn't agree. It looked a pinch inside from up here. And now back to the top of the order we go. Daniel Descalzo. Started the ball game out with a strikeout swinging. Certainly not Dave Stewart at the plate. <laughs> He's the manager of the MLB PAA team. Smoke, the Oakland A's Hall of Famer, three-time World Series champ, 1989 World Series MVP as Descalzo fouls that off, but into the kid zone and not caught by a fan. That one tapped towards first, a squibber. Dan Oberst waits for Descalzo, he'll flip it to Deerman for out number three. But the former major leaguers finally strike. Triple from Brian Barton on the 3-2-2 pitch. And the base knock from George Kataris brings him in. And let's throw it down to Josh Tolevsky, our banana ball statistical savant. Yeah, thank you so much, Vika. We're here to talk about the MLB PAA stats, but bananafy them a little bit. So let's get into it. Alex Wilson, we referenced a one minute and 30 second inning in the major leagues. Now, if not for some slow walk-ups, we could have very well seen Alex Wilson with the first inning, if you put that into banana ball, under a minute, which would be a record. Now, let's talk about Johnny Damon. In 2000, 65 walks, 46 stolen bases, he was at the height of his powers. Now, if you take those 65 walks and put them into banana ball, he likely would have had 48 
all four sprints of at least second base, and you translate that into runs scored, he probably has about 160, well above league average. It would have led the American League, as a matter of fact. And then Heath Bell, he's the ultimate showdown closer, and I'll tell you why. 2009 to 2011, 42 saves, 47 saves, and 44 saves. And his home runs per nine inning rate on average, point four. He would not have allowed a ball out of the park. He would have been money in showdowns. These guys were built to play banana ball. And let's get back into the game action. Back to you, Biko. Thank you very much, Mr. Talevsky. Jeremy Guthrie back out of the, on the bump for his third inning of work. He's got six, seven, eight in the Bananas lineup. DR Meadows, Dakota McFadden, and Bill Leroy due to swing it. He's trying to protect a one-run lead here in the third that would tie the game at a point apiece if he can do just that. And joining me in the booth, last night's starting pitcher for the Nanners, Mr. Kyle Lewigs. Pico, I can't explain once again how happy I am to be standing next to you. You smell great, by the way. The feeling is mutual, and I do not smell close to as good as you, buddy. 2-2 count on the doctor, the center fielder. And that one barreled to center, but Billy Burns has a beat on it. And he'll mosey on under it for out number one. How about our first ever triple on a 3-2-2 pitch, Kyle? Yeah, that's the first time it's actually came back to bite us. And that was definitely probably the longest 3-2-2 uh, I've ever seen in my whole entire career. Oh my God, Gunther's backed up at second. Oh my God. That's a... 100-foot pitch, he wanted the call, crow hop pitch. That looks all too familiar. <laughs> Nearly clips Dakota McFadden. <laughs> he turns to possibly throw there. Yeah, doing his best Cowboy Kyle impersonation. DMAC, the man out of Rocky Point, North Carolina. I've been getting a lot of heat for that recently, Biko, because it's, I mean, it's really easy to throw a strike from that far, especially with a curveball, and I don't know why I can't do it every time. Well, it's, I mean, say so uh, for yourself, buddy. I don't think I got out there. I would do it more than one time out of 10 attempts as DMAC thought he had a ball for a sprint. It ends up being a full count. DH for the Nanners. Ready for a payoff pitch. Guthrie takes his time for probably the first time tonight and ties him up. That two seam looked like it had about 14 inches of break on it as Kataris sends the throw back into center field. Yeah, I've seen, a, I've seen a lot of banana ball games in my day and just a lot of games here in Grayson. And this is, that, this is one that's made me smile a lot here early on in, in, <laughs> three, in almost three innings in the books. It's, it's, it's been really cool. These guys are, are definitely bought in and, and it's, a, it's just a different look. It's really fun for the fans, I think. Now, this is phenomenal. It's got all-star game vibes with all the former MLB guys wearing their former team of choice. Now your six-year roommate. Four and a half of them at the University of North Georgia. Of course, three summers as collegiate bananas together. Now your second professional banana year together. He's the last hope for the Nanners here in the third inning. And he's got the whole city of Dublin here in Grayson Stadium watching them, all 13. <laughs> Maceo lets it eat over by the first base coach's box as only he can. I don't think we can show that on YouTube. Can we show that on? Well, we just did. That one flared towards center. Billy Burns under it. And a one, two, three frame now. Six in a row retired for Jeremy Guthrie. The MLB guys win the third inning, one nothing. Tie the game at one point apiece. And a big pose for the third base camera. We'll be back with Kyle Lewis in the booth after Stare Down Saturday with Reginald Horton and Dave Stewart. You're right, Biko. I'm right here with Reginald Horton and Dave Stewart. And back in Dave's prime, he was the most feared man on the mound, not somebody you wanted to have a staring contest with. Reggie's going to take him on. Dave, Reg, I'll count you in. One, two, three, stare. All right, Dave sizing Reg up, Reg sizing Dave up. I mean, there's a lot of intensity in both of these spaces right now, the likes of which I have never, never seen before. Dave, of course, rocking the cap iconically low, much like he did on the mound for the Oakland A's on route to winning a 1989 World Series MVP. But Reggie is holding incredibly strong right now as
as always, oh, Michael Morris trying to kind of get in the way of Reg a little bit, but it does absolutely nothing to intimidate Reg. The guys are still going at it. Michael Morris trying to prove a distraction, and I think Reggie blinked. Did Reggie blink? Do we have a call? It was a blink from Reggie, which means Dave Smoke Stewart is the winner. Dave, we've got to hear from you. What is it like to beat Reggie? Brother, just another victim. Just another victory, one of many in your career. Reggie, Dave gave you an incredibly hard fight. What do you have to say about the battle? That was a battle. Yep. 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 All right, Reggie, thank you so much. Dave, Reg, great job. Pico, back to you, big guy. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, that was a battle of titans as Reggie, who thought he would fall in the entirety of his bananas career. Matt Damon's ripped off the, the Kansas City jersey. He's got the bananas BP top on. Well, this is pretty exciting. The banana back in Daytona Beach, Florida. It's going to swing it in the Nanners tank top. Two, three, four in the MLB PAA order as Damon gets a fastball outside. Vincent Chapman's got to pause for time to clean off the plate. And now he's starting to boogie, throws the mask away, and it's party time. Shaking that tuchus like only he can. Thank you for the zoom in on the derriere. That is magnificent. Boy, that guy, I think I could be hypnotized by the way he moves his body. For the first time ever in 411 history, I didn't think he was going to stop. <laughs> I thought for an hour and 29 minutes straight, he was just going to keep doing that. <laughs> what a pitch to Damon, way out in front of the slider. Johnny grounded out to first, back in the first inning. Now 2-1 on the MLB PAA DH. Damon, the most tenured man in Major League Baseball out of all his teammates, 18 years in the bigs. World Series champ with the Red Sox in 04, the Yankees in 09. And spits on the bender down and in, count goes full. Payoff pitch is our first sprint of the night. Damon off to the races. Oh, we got him. He's oh, got to stop. You oh, gotta got to hit him. reverse, Johnny. <laughs> that was the correct move. He said his, his knees aren't what they used to be. I think he needs an oxygen tank on first. <laughs> He's not in good shape right now. It's the, it's the reason why he isn't in the outfield today. It's the half night off. And for those joining us for your first banana ball game of all time, when ball four is fired as John Buck Hand stands his way into the box. Graceful wow. dismount. Wow, that was incredible. We got Tanner Thomas, party animal, uh, pinch running for, for Damon over there at first. John Buck, six foot two, 235. And That's a lot of meat to be thrown around over your head. As graceful as a gazelle. Yeah, it was beautiful. Struck out swinging his first time. The movement on Deerman's fastballs should not be legal. Buck nearly steps out of the box, was able to keep the right foot in, so he doesn't get a strike called on him. Tanner Thomas, as you mentioned, pitch running for Damon. He's seven for seven on the tour in stolen base attempts. Trails only Dan Oberst for the tour lead by one. Tyler Swernick in the chat said Reggie loses two in a row. Reggie lost his first one of the year, too, a week ago today. Uh-oh, Tanner Thomas caught in between first and second. Now Malden has it in the rundown. Dan Oberst trying to pursue the Party Animals pinch runner, and Ryan Cox is going to be the lucky winner. Looks like Tanner thought that one scooted away from old Billiam behind the dish. Billius Bryant, uh, Leroy the 15th. The mayor of... Billiam. Sorry, I forgot his middle name. Billiam. 
Just barely messed that one up. Buck pops that one towards the fans. Is a play going to be made? No. Bobbled. And Buck still with a 2-2 count on you know, it. I was, I was very upset with uh, our owner last night. There was a ball on the fourth that was hit where he was uh, standing in the metal bleachers for a promo that was going to happen at the end of the inning. And it landed right next to him, and he didn't catch it while I was pitching. Of course, that one, well, that would have counted. Jesse Cole is our biggest fan. Yeah, yeah, some would say. He owns the team. Yeah, I just thought that he could have gave a little bit more effort, and I made sure to let him know in the dugout after after the promo, the promotion was over. Gonna need more from you next time, man in the yellow tux. That's a heater on the outside corner, dotted perfectly, and Vincent gets his keister into the punch out call. Five strikeouts on the night now for Mr. Electric. And Johnny Gomes will swing it. That was John Buck, Kara Heater. Always here to help out my marketing director, off camera, off mic. Now Johnny Gomes. How about that? Hitting two, three, and four, all due up this inning. All Johns. How about that? and none of them were taken in my John draft. Well, that's a disgrace to our three guys here is I, Damon can't believe that strike call. I did get John Cena. Gomes, rather. I'm getting my Johns mixed up. I would have rather Johnny Gomes than John Cena. That was before I knew him as well as I know him now. That looked like it was middle middle. Bill Leroy wanted the punch out. I mean, he was in a pretty abstract catching position. Johnny was plunked his first time by Dearman and how about a 360 from Bill before yeah. the foul ball? I don't know what's happening anymore. The world's most exciting catcher, folks, and most flexible, Johnny Gomes. Oh, he made an attempt. Oh, no. Was trying to steal his second first base in banana ball history. And this time, he is out. Billiam gets the flip over there just in time. Three men up, three men down in a roundabout way, thanks to the caught stealing strikeout and another caught stealing, but instead of at second, at first. And it is Hey Baby time here in historic Grayson Stadium, pretty fired up to see how the MLB guys get after Hey Baby. They were practicing at about 9.45 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Sixth straight sellout. Nanner's getting into it. The character's getting into it. The fans fired up. Brandon Sherman in the stands as per usual. He's fired up. And happy to be on camera. I think he's always fired up. <laughs> Look at that guy. He still doesn't know how to do it, baby. Well, I'll tell you what, who does? Our former major leaguers. Excellent job over on the third baseline. Very good. The buy-in has been incredible up to this point. And as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, word on the street, I'll believe it when I hear it, is we have a man mic'd up on the field. I don't know if it's Jeremy Guthrie, who just left the mound, or if it's Colin Ballister, our new guy on the bump. But if you can hear me, bark twice. It's, I've got... I'm, I'm not hearing any barks. I've got no barks. Can you give me your best bark while we're at it? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I got a high and a low. That's really good. You got to be able to hit both of those. Two for the price of one.
All right, well, we'll work on our mic'd up situation in the near future. For now, the tallest man on the MLB PAA team takes over on the bump, Colin Ballister. Representing the Detroit Tigers, one of his three teams. He played four across his six years as a pitcher in the MLB. As Jackson Olsen, our TikTok superstar, the third baseman, in full greatest showman, Hugh Jackman attire, bounces out to first. That closes the book on Jeremy Guthrie, who in his banana ball debut was awfully impressive, gives up an unearned run in the first and then retires the next six batters he faces for a really solid two plus innings tossed. Yeah, he, was, he looked very good. And I was talking to him before the game about uh, trick plays that I thought that he might have. Speaking of trick plays, now all of a sudden, the former major leaguers doing a little five, oh check that, four two two. Look at these guys moving it and grooving it. A slight Rasputin from Ballister. <laughs> And a 2-0 count on the songbird of our generation, Mr. Dalton Malden, the second baseman. In the 10 hole tonight for the Nanners. Hardy cutting a miss on the heater. <laughs> and now a 3-1 count on Malden with the top of the order waiting on deck. And joining Kyle and I in the booth, Orestes Destrade, thank you so much for popping up here on the mic, my man. Holy cow, Savannah has gone bananas. I'm gonna tell you that much. This is a whole <laughs> heck of a lot of fun, guys. Well, listen, you are just about as good a person to ask this, and, and I will ask the question after this payoff pitch. Which just misses the inside corner. Here back. it is. Ballister wanted it, second sprint of the night. And the former major leaguers, your teammates, execute it all right feel well. Forgot. He probably feel forgot. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Brian Outside Barton. of that, I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, we practiced it earlier. I mean, we, we came out here and practiced. <laughs> you guys just scared us enough that we had to come out here and practice it. So mainly that was the big thing. Everybody came in this morning going, what about that ball four thing? What about that ball four? I don't know if they can implement that in the major leagues. That one, there's a few other things that I'm seeing that MLB can done as already has done. But that's not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you there. Now to the top of the order we go. Eric Jones, the only hit of the night for the Nanners. Single back up the middle as Malachi Mitchell pinch runs for Dalton Malden. You can pinch run every time through the order. So since we're second trip for the Bananas, Malachi with his second time out there on the bags. Orestes, four years in Major League Baseball uh, and, and even more across the yes. sea over in Japan, which obviously is one of the greatest atmospheres for baseball in the world. Outstanding. How does this compare to, to your previous it's experiences? It's incredible that you say that because it does remind me of Japanese baseball, not so much the speed of it, but the, you know, some of the, the hype and the excitement because Japanese baseball, especially when the home team is hitting, it's a, it's a raucous band kind of situation going on. But obviously the pace is not as quick as, as banana ball. That one tapped foul. We'll do another 2-2 two -two to the bananas. And I was at this that I heard while well, right before the game, uh, some of the guys, and I think, um, who was it? Oh, Bill, the great Bill Lee, spaceman himself, said that they're thinking of taking maybe the game to Japan. So uh, obviously today I'm wearing uh, in honor of w WBC Team Japan, and I'm pulling for them. I'm wearing my Sable Lions uh, outfit. Malachi off for third. The throw from Kataris gets into left. Mitchell coming home. That will walk off the fourth inning. Bananas back on top. They lead two to one. And time for a little group dance at the plate to celebrate. The choreograph is outstanding. <laughs> uh, Paula Abdul herself would be proud <laughs> about what you guys got full off and, and uh, it's outstanding. I was, a, trying to, I was trying to get the third baseman to get a little, you know, distracted when I was coaching third base. You know, hey, give me an autograph. You know, what's your Instagram account? But Olsen would not pay any attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of practice on the entertainment sides. And, and believe it or not, you know, being here for so long, it, it actually makes the game easier because you're not thinking about it at all. That's and it, it takes it away from a pressure situation. I mean, I, I was able to play here for 
four years for the college team before right. playing banana ball full time. And I had leaps and bounds better numbers um, in the, for that college team than I did at any of the colleges I played and, for. And Kyle, I wanted because it's interesting because you know when they some of the things that they're implementing already this year in MLB. Obviously, you know the, the pickoff, you know, is big. The bases are big, but the biggest thing is the clock. Yeah, you know. And it's curious to me when we were they were giving us the rules, you know, the, the, the walk through the rundown this morning that you step out, it's a strike. Yeah. Right. Lo and behold. And that's been since the, you know, the inception of this league. Right. Yeah. Uh, six years ago. Lo and behold, it's a part of Major League Baseball now yeah. almost basically not that you can't step out. But you have only a certain that amount pitch of time clock, yeah. to the pitch clock, and it will be a strike. So. And what's crazy about that is what we've seen in, in some of those. <laughs> we'll see if they had the dizzy daddy race to have in between innings in Major League Baseball. Look at this guy. Oh, he's struggling. <laughs> I would. They, they couldn't pay me enough to do that. They could not pay me enough to do that one right there. Okay, now you. I think they're getting their kids ready for school here after doing about 15 <laughs> spins with the bat. And they gotta run home. I love it. There it is. That was oh, a good one. And the the Lion King with the baby. Banana baby. <laughs> Come on. It's a staple around that here. That one was just too cute. It's just everything flows so quickly. And like you said, you know, when you really think about baseball and where it's gone in the last, you know, almost decade. Yeah. It's the only the you know the true results that you get. Right. Yeah. You get home run, strikeout, or walk. And, and even the walk, you guys have, you know, created it to be interesting. But we had to change the game a little bit. I'm a purist. I'm an old school guy. But this is uh, something that had to happen. And I think you guys are part of that uh, innovation. Well, we appreciate getting that from you, Big O, a legendary man in your own respect. And now Christian Dearman out for his fifth inning of work. It's going to be four, five, six. Check that, five, six, seven for your teammates here on the MLB PAA side. Nanners lead two to one. They walked off the first and they've walked off the fourth. I think Morris tattooed a ball about as good as he ever has in his career. <laughs> and I think that's gone in every other ballpark except for Grayson Stadium. Well, he hit it literally to the deepest <laughs> part. I mean, it's right in front of that, whatever that is, it's 420, is it? And it's yeah, it's, it's 400, but it's the longest 400 I've ever seen is. That's not 400. I know. It plays I, more like 500. <laughs> yeah. I've Google Earthed it. I, yeah, the, there you go. The satellites yeah, say it's Google 400, it? but yeah. I mean, it looks like it's about a mile off. But, yeah. And that's banana ball no, for you. No, no, no. He, he crushes his first ball, a little flare that time, and he's one for two now because of it. Listen, if that's 400, then Jimmy Hopp is buried underneath center field. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a lie. That is not going on. But we've got a bat on fire. Billy Burns what? What? has three bats on fire. Oh, watch what he does. Oh, they went out. They He's going to juggle them. Still impressive that he can do this yes. with three baseball bats. And that's going to be the lucky winner. We, pr he practiced it earlier today, and they were on fire. So was he. <laughs> well, that's live entertainment. You never know what's going to happen. That one is blooped towards Ryan Cox at second, who tries a trick play. <laughs> and... I think that's, well, I, I think we're all confused here. I give it a, 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 a force out. out. Yeah, we're going to call it a force <laughs> out. And Breland Almodova is just going to pinch run for Billy Burns, who I think is one of the guys on your team. Well, would that, that be an infield fly, maybe? Interesting one. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're just going to play on. We're going to play off on that? It's yeah. going to be banana ball? We'll call, it, we'll call it an F4. Yes. That one's through the side. Luis Montanez with his first hit of the night. He's, now one for two. That kid's a great story. He's a, he's a Miami kid. We're on the bus together, and uh, at least a great story for me. I didn't know that he went to my high school. So I go, <laughs> I know you're in Miami. Where are you from? He goes, oh, no, I went to Coral Park. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then he starts reeling off people that we knew, but, you know, it's like 30 years apart, you know, uh, maybe about 20. And a uh, very nice kid who had a nice, you know, run with the, with the Giants and a couple other teams. Yeah, started with the, the Orioles. Yes, yes, was the number three overall pick back in 2000. First at bat in Major League Baseball was a home run. You don't see that very often. Now Brian Barton, first hit of the game for the MLB PAA guys on Deerman, Cox, Malden, and Meadows' elongated dance. He roped a triple to dead center, bloops this one out into left. Ryan Cox makes the call and the catch, tries to double off Breland Almodova and does. Boy, you're going to think this thing is fixed. That's the second party animal pinch running 
for the former major leaguers who's made a pretty surprising base running blunder. <laughs> I'm texting right now to the commissioner of Banana Bowl, yeah. <laughs> which I believe is Jesse. Yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> and and uh, cause, uh, we were gifted, quote unquote gifted, the animals, and I, I don't know, this is like a gift again. Well, you know, the thing that makes me mad is none of those base running mistakes happen when we play them. No. None, you know. none. You can't ever catch a break. They're the hardest team to beat on the planet. No, they, they and they uh, they have it out for you guys. Yeah. They, they want to beat you guys. I mean, every. I was like, explain the, you guys are party animal. I'm not sure. Who, oh, no, no, no. We play, we're like their opposition, yeah. like 85% of the time. Yeah, I think the series is tied right now because. It is. It's 4-4-1. Four, four and one. We had the first tie in banana ball history on the first home game of the uh, year. And I mean, how did you guys come across a tie? Good with question, all the Big things up. that you guys do to untie. Right, right. So Other than put your grandmother out there and <laughs> wheel her around in a wheelchair <laughs> the opposite way. Well, you know, we have showdowns <laughs> instead of extra innings right. to kind of keep it, you know, keep in league what we're trying to do here with the two-hour time limit on the game. We don't want to go all night. Uh, and we capped it at three rounds of showdowns. Uh, First, you have a fielder. No fielder. Yeah, and then you have no fielder, and then the bases are loaded. And it was uh, both teams scored a point, were denied a point, and then gotcha. both scored four so points. So went through a full three yes. showdown. Yes. Six Man. points were scored in showdowns, and that was Wild. the first. It That's was the wild. 34th game of all time and the first ever tie. How about that? Yeah. They've got, I mean, those guys, they've got, they probably got four, four or five guys hitting over 400 to start this tour. I mean, we're, no, no, I mean, we're nine, ten guys. games in. Yeah, I mean, in good shape. they can yeah. swing it. Most of them I talk to, and they play, you know, major college ball. Yep. And, and a few obviously play pro ball. Pico Scala with Kyle Lewigs and Orestes up here in the booth. And now joining us on the mound is Alex Wilson. Alex, how you doing down there, buddy? Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it. Oh, this is fantastic. Thank you for slapping a mic on. Yeah. When was the last time you pitched in a ball game, man? Oh, uh, that'd be about three years ago. <laughs> about three years ago. I've been throwing BP to some nine-year-olds, though. Oh, it sounds like you're ready to rumble, then. Oh, yeah, here we go. That is a bomb yeah. deep to right Here's center. Here he's ready. Eric oh, Jones leaves the building. Well, that was quick. <laughs> Thank you for hopping on the mic, Alex. Yeah, well, you know. Let's do it another time. Yeah. Eric Jones <laughs> walks off the inning on the first pitch, and the Nanners lead three to one. What kind of mic up was that? What kind of mic up was that? That's an excellent question, right? I don't know what's going on over here, but <laughs> we've got to clip that. that I've, been pit I've been throwing BP to nine-year-olds, nine so I should be good. <laughs> First pitch, goes, oppo bomb over the fan wall. And then he goes, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll hopefully be able to keep the mic on Alex for uh, his next half inning out there, because I don't want him to be one pitch and done tonight. Eric Jones has his second homer of the tour. And the Nanners walk off their second straight inning, take a three to one lead in points. And EJ, big congratulations from the Nanners catcher, Bill Leroy. That was a big time bomb. And I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist yes. over here now, but that baseball I think had to have some, some extra <laughs> juice on it. I don't know what was going on there. Well, especially after we saw Mike Morse test <laughs> the limits of Grayson no, that Stadium. Ball was, that ball was well hit. Yeah, his first time. Eric Jones sends it probably about, I would, my uh, my eyes say about 430 plus feet to right center. That was a blow. That was a well-deserved home run right there. Over the highest wall we've got. Still well over an hour and seven minutes to play. Five innings in the book, so we're on a terrific pace to get nine innings in and under the two-hour time limit, which we are nine for nine so far on the year, and that's that's just a testament to the terrific pace of Banana Ball. How, yeah. many, how many games do you guys have uh, this year planned? We have 87 games planned in total. That's a lot a of good. different places, that's a lot of different ballparks, so yeah, yeah. pretty excited. We're, uh, we're shipping off. Two-thirds of them are on the road, right? Correct. Uh, yeah. Th 30 games here in Grayson Stadium, and then uh, you could do the math, 57 yeah. of them yeah. on the road. We'll be shipping off to uh, Sugarland, Texas this coming Wednesday to play a little Thursday, Friday, Saturday out there and then come back and then head out to Montgomery, Alabama the following weekend to play Now, there, wh so. wh where is, um, 
like the farthest place that you're going to be going this year. Somewhere in California, right? We got yeah. we got three stops in California. Though. Four stops. Four stops. Don't Excuse sell us short, Kyle. I've there never been go. to California. I know nothing about it, so. Neither it's, have it's I. It's big and long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm it's hearing. That's, 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 the got, on, got, that's the word on that's the word on the street. You got water. You got <laughs> you got Hollywood stars, fires, snow. mountains, some big trees, Mountain the biggest snow, trees we've got. A yeah. little bit of everything is yeah. in California. Got it. I well, hope I can see all of it while we're there. <laughs> to the top, I'm sure you'll see every part of it, Kyle. Uh, to the top of the sixth we go, 9-10-1. And the major leaguers lineup. And George Kataris, have yourself a night. Two, two for two. two knocks. And he's driven in the only run for the former major leaguers thus far as well. I love those Brewers uniforms. The old school Brewers? Yeah, those yeah. are, those are yeah. sweet. Those I are wanted awesome. to, I wanted, we were trying to get a, a banana set modeled after that top right there. I it kind of goes that. with ours, yeah, and then matching pants in navy blue. One day we'll do it. That one down and in, Breland Almodova running behind Ben Kozlowski, Bill Leroy, and Vincent Chapman to pinch run for Kataris. Nice. All right, here we go. Redeem <laughs> runner. No, no more. called the no redemption more. <laughs> runner of, of the party animals because I have not been very happy with their base running so far, guys. Big swing and a miss on the slider. By the way, I'm coaching third base from here. I don't know if you know that, but I, it's I, incredible. I, yeah, this day and age of the first of, ever. In this day and age of technology and, and AI, you know what I mean? There's things that I can do from here that you don't even know about. <laughs> I just looked down and realized there was nobody in the third base coach's box. Kozlowski down swinging for the second uh, time and tonight. Vincent's given us an attempt at a worm. Not just an attempt, I would say a smashing success. That was. Uh, that was more like a caterpillar. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Big O disagrees. <laughs> I don't know if that was a worm. <laughs> oh, we got Bill set up behind him. Where'd that mess? It's going to be ball one <laughs> to the leadoff hitter, Daniel Descalzo, the shortstop. And now a 2-0 -oh count. Watch out right here. He can swing the bat a little bit. He was my pick for MVP for your guys. Nice. We're just ahead of Billy Burns. I got it. Right over our heads in the booth. That is, By Bico, the way, that is Biko's dream, is to catch a, a pop fly up there. <laughs> we got to get rid of this net first, of and then we'll be sold. Say, I thought there was an opening there, but there's not. <laughs> you got to get rid of the net. If you got rid of the net, you have a good chance. I know. That sucker will be coming right back here. There's nothing I'd rather do in life than barehand a foul ball. While you're doing a broadcast. Correct. Of course. It's the trifecta right there. That is the trifecta. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's one of those things that you can like say, okay, I mean, if a bus hit me, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> Payoff pitch to Danny. He's popped up in foul territory into the bananas, Danny. Mr. Roberts puts it away for out number two. So the stadium, 1920-ish. Ooh, you're close. Yeah, 26. It was built as municipal, and we'll get back to that in a second. For now, we'll throw it down to Jesse yes. Cole yeah. because we got a big entrance. Please welcome Bill the Spaceman Lee. It's your guy, Orestes. This is my guy. Um, very good friends with Bill Lee. Over 75 years old. Now, I forget how old he is right now. 76. 76. Playing in three different roster teams this year. <laughs> <laughs> including you guys like he travels around and plays in 60 and over leagues 70 and over I mean he is and can still bring it I mean throw strikes as far as I know that he's, he's pitched for you guys he's never walked a guy that's a fact I think uh, he, he rattled off 43 innings of play uh, in between our, our stops and when he met us in Jacksonville <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's insane in that in that men's league tournament no, no, no. here's I don't know if he told you the story and he's got so many. He goes, Big O, I played in Jacksonville, then I had this other game in Fort Myers. I got to Fort Myers, like at two in the morning, there wasn't a hotel available. I slept at a, at a public uh, um, library. <laughs> Some library was open, and the first person was in there, and he knocked, and like, yeah, he slept at a bench or something in a library. Got up, slept for three hours, and pits another like four innings. <laughs> Split is doing some laps on the track for whatever reason. You never know in Banana Land. So Bill's going to come in to try and get the final out here in the top of the sixth inning. And he's got a big task ahead of him. Johnny Damon, the 18-year MLB vet. 
the bananas are shifting and Split is running foul poles in the warning track in the outfield. Oh yeah. Never a day off. Right day. away with the Ethan pitch. I think that was the Leafus. <laughs> the is what he what he's coined it. <laughs> yeah, that is nice. <laughs> I like it. Damon O for one, a ground out and a one base sprint. And can't wait to attack the Leafus. Two foul balls, he's behind Owen two. Couple Red Sox legends doing battle. And there's the heater, a bit high. Bill with 10 years spent in Boston, a Red Sox Hall of Famer. Now a 2-2 count on Damon. And that one chopped towards short. Ryan Cox between the legs. Razzle dazzle across the diamond in time. And Bill does the job. Gets his Red Sox counterpart. And we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Bananas just need one run to walk off their fourth frame of the night. They're currently up 3-1. And Split has now wandered off the warning track and just meandering around the outfield grass. So how serious is uh, the possibility of going international, specifically Japan? Is this something that's been talked about? Incredibly serious. How about that? Oh, yeah. Yep, Japan and Australia are the two biggest... Uh, Markets that you've got of eyeing and, and they're yeah. showing in return interest. That's the important part, is that's where we've got the most interest right. and we'd be but, fired uh, up to go there. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this would be a huge success in Japan. First of all, they, they love baseball, but they also pick up things very quickly. So they'll, they'll get this banana ball very fast. Yeah, we are... We'd be beyond thrilled to be in the land of the rising sun is now... We check back in with Alex Wilson with a mic on the mound. How you doing out there, buddy? Uh, you know, I got some rest now. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make this one last more than one pitch. Hey, I I think the odds are in your favor, buddy. You know, I thought that before I walked out here the first time. <laughs> I haven't thrown a pitch in three years, and I get ambushed. I'm gonna have to talk to that guy. Well, if, we're we're, if we're thinking with a glass half full here, I don't think it can go any worse. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the one problem might have been that that hitter was not nine, he was 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Little League, when you go up that next level, that other, when you go from the minors to the majors, you oh, know, that. World that, of difference. It's a world of difference, 45 right, feet. Boys, we're already winning right here. Yep, we already got a sword fresh out the gate. It's a good start, Alex. Dan Oberst in the box. Oh, well, there we go. And there's All an right. out for you. We might even mix one in here. Good. <laughs> Alex, a seven-year MLB vet with the Red Sox, Tigers, yeah. you know, and Brewers. You know what, guys? I'm kind of tired after all these pitches I've been throwing. Hold on one second. Yeah, sure. Hold on. Take a breath, buddy. Yeah, here we go. Oh, what do you got in there? Oh, wow. <laughs> Ooh, a little extra oh, goodie. Oh, wow. Nice, Alex. Okay, we're good now. I didn't know that was a hiding I, spot. I don't yeah, think any go. banana ball guy knows that. Yeah. <laughs> Something to think about. How many times have you played here? Uh, you know, we're mixing it in. <laughs> That's the greatest hidey hole yeah. I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Hey, it's a dull, it's a dull Easter egg season. <laughs> a little banana beer for every out he gets. Now Michael Deeb at the dish. Oh, come on, he's not supposed to swing at that. Yeah, it's gonna be a one out single for the Nanners left fielder. One for two on the night. Now Danny Hosley, the right fielder, ground out to first, his first trip up. Alex, how does this environment here in Grayson Stadium compare to the ballparks you've thrown in in the past, buddy? You know, they got a great thing going here. It's pretty fun. Oh. They were trying to trick him right there with that bouncer. Good scoop by Buck. Yeah, and word to the wise over there. Our big, our big man on first is not much of a base running threat at all. That's good to know. That's good to know. Oh, John. There you go. You feel good. You look good, buddy. Hey, I just snuck a fastball by somebody. No, but it's got some movement going on. Throw on the equalizer now. Yeah. Oh! Yes! That 
That's a sword, Mr. Wilson. Hey, some things never go away, I think. <laughs> My fastball went away a Your long time ago. Your knee's aching right now? <laughs> yeah. There goes Deeb and a yeah. foul ball. That, that, uh, he doesn't do that. I don't know what's happening anymore. Yeah, I, I'm telling I'm you. I'm starting to not trust anybody. That's <laughs> Alex, Alex. We're getting our guys doubled off. There's this guy there's stealing. There's, there's, there's something going on, man. I'm up here trying to investigate, buddy. <laughs> You know, we're going to figure it out here soon, you know? That was Deeb's first stolen base attempt of the tour. We're 10 games in. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> Trying to test John Buck. That's a big strikeout. Hey, we mixed one in. Got a boy, Alex. We mixed one in. Oh. Bill, come get me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Bill. Bill's not even gonna throw a pitch. He's gonna pick him off since he's stealing again. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you right, what. I think you can finish this without a pitch. It's through the gasoline, the pitch. Hey, I know. You Thank don't even you. have to throw a pitch right here. You're gonna pick that guy off. Okay. Hey, they told me he doesn't steal, but he took off. <laughs> Just a word to the wise. You forgot your drink. Alex, you, know, you forgot your drink. Point. Hold on. We need that. <laughs> I'm done, so gotta I, go get my Easter egg. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest, Bill Lee would love a sip of that too. Bill, you need a refreshment? No, he's no. locked in. Yeah, he's tapped yeah, in. He's locked he, in. He can't hear anything. <laughs> Is that because he's locked yeah. in or? Yeah. Yeah. Just little bit of, little thing, bit. Okay, I, I know if you're trying to go after us older folks here. <laughs> All right, here we go, boys. What do you think of that banana beer, Alex? You know, it's a little bit different, a little bit different. You know, I, I know one thing. I'm going to start throwing all sliders next time. <laughs> I got two more games on this thing. We're not throwing heaters anymore. No, they hit heaters. Yeah, so. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's been fun. This is an experience that, that, get that stuff off, I'll never forget. So, so, Hey, Alex, thank you so much for getting mic'd up and having some fun with us. I'm really fired up for you to be back on the mound, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been a blast. Yeah, Happy to be here. Got my whole family here, so it's been it's been fun for everybody. Uh, that's good stuff, dude. Have fun the rest of the night. All right, thank you, sir. There goes Alex Wilson. Boy, that was a lot of fun. That was good. <laughs> I, I, first of all, not that many. Oh, hey, whoa. Okay, don't go after Billy. No. <laughs> Rumble in Grayson Stadium, and Bill <laughs> looks like Pedro Martinez taking down Don Zimmer. What a bear <laughs> hug and a toss. He is from Vermont. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of bears over there. <laughs> he's given up uh, two home runs in his career as a banana, and he's one time he plunked the next guy after the, uh, the homer, and then the other time he plunked the next two guys after the homer. No, he didn't. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. That's a fact. And it wasn't with the leafless pitch. No. I no. <laughs> and Jake Skull was plunked both oh. times. So that was a scary one. Looks like everyone got out of the way of that screaming line drive from DR Meadows. Yeah, when you think of Bill Lee after this pitch here. That one to short. Descalzo behind the back. Nice. Nice. Schnazzy, Daniel. So Bill Lee definitely is uh, not only a two. He's our, he's Banana Ball's version of Shohei Otani. He's the world's best if relief pitcher of Banana Ball. No, he, he, he goes two ways. He pitches for our team and your team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's doing it all. It's the first time I've ever seen a pitcher play for both teams in one game. In one inning. <laughs> Close out the fourth. And legally, <laughs> by by the bylaws of Banana Ball, I think that all plays out. Of course it does. I saw that we were told that uh, before the game. The only thing that's, that has never happened in Banana Ball is you catching a foul ball here in the booth while there is a game going on. That, that, just, that needs to happen, hopefully, one day. Yeah, that's it. And it would be extra special because it would actually be an out. Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> Good catch with that. 
<laughs> it would be an out. And here comes my favorite pitcher. And with that being gone, I have to go back down to the dugout. It's been so much fun, Biko. Thank you for having me out You're here. Awesome, bro. It's God great talking with you. you. Awesome, and I will dude. see you guys soon. Sounds great, Kyle. There goes Cowboy Kyle. See you in Tampa. That's yes. That's going to be fun. Go April 28th as we kill Kyle's mic. Oh, watch this. And now Matt Wolf. He's got to be somewhere in that barrel. There he is. Here comes the dismount. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. No way, dude. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's crazy. That is Matt Wolf, a resident rodeo clown and trick pitching extraordinaire. Guy who, when he showed up at our tryout last February, he was truly the bell of the ball. I mean, we had no idea what was coming. He broke out 18 different pitches just like that. Seriously. He's the fifth generation rodeo clown in his family out of Joy, Oklahoma. But had played, but not only was it a rodeo clown and, and involved in rodeo, but he, but he knew baseball. Oh yeah, four years of college ball, a dynamite infielder. The, the biggest secret on the team is that he's got the best hands in the infield of anybody that the Bananas have. Really? Yeah. Fascinating. No, he is a no-joke ball player and has just always loved kind of goofing around and the tricks that you can work into baseball. It was frowned upon in, in his traditional baseball days. Right. And then he, uh, he came to the Banana Ball World Tour tryout last year. Dear friend of Tyler Gillum's, grew up a town next to the Bananas head coach and was actually coached by Gillum his final year in college at ECU. That's East Central University out in Oklahoma. You know, one thing about the trick ball scenario of the game that, that you guys are playing, and obviously, you know, the comparative would be the Harlem Globetrotters in basketball, right. right? But people don't realize, and I'm not, again, downplaying basketball trickery. And he shows something right there. <laughs> yeah. But baseball not only does it have a tradition of, like, you know, this fundamental stuff, but you don't realize how hard, having played the game, how hard some of these antics and things that they're able to do is just phenomenal. Oh, yeah, John Buck, nice CNI single through the right side. Danny Hosley charges and fires in, and the MLB PAA first baseman now behind the dish as we're past the halfway point in the game. One for three on the night. Johnny Gomes. 0 for 0, he's been hit by a pitch and caught trying to steal first base. That hurts the on-base percentage, but not the batting average in banana ball statistics. And you know why that happened? He was just being, being funny and goofing around, but since you guys have a strict rule of being, getting out of the box, once he got out of the box, Mighty Might umpire over there, you got him, forget his name. <laughs> Vincent Chapman. Vincent caught it, and I was at third base, like, oh no, and he, and he lost his chance to hit. That's what it is right there as the between the legs pitch is fouled straight back. It's once you make a break no, for no, first you, you base, you get out of the true, box. True that's the rule. I that's, mean, I agree with it. It's what it is, and, and it's fun. It's so amazing to have you guys here is Are Matt you kidding me? throws the ball in his hat. He's got another ball on him, and he strikes out Johnny Gomes. That was glorious. He put the ball in his hat, threw the hat, had another ball, threw that ball. Only in banana ball. I love it. I love it. It's one of the little tricks of our game is there's no box in banana ball. It lets you get a little more bizarre than your traditional pitcher. But nobody takes it to the extreme of Matt Wolf the fifth. Mike Morse is going to be ready to swing as soon as he gets in the box. Couple hops, he's ready to go. Matt Wolf loses his trousers and throws a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. This guy's too much. Morse one for two on the night, a fly out and a base knock. Hit a ball about 400 feet and was out, and then tapped a ball and got a base knock. That went to short. Ryan Cox between the legs to second, throw to first, double play. Oh, a phenomenal 6-4-3 DP. Glove to glove between the legs. And Matt Wolf. Only faces three batters. Right on cue, we're talking about how hard some of this fancy stuff is, and you pull up a double play like that. It's uh, it's not easy, ladies and gentlemen. This is something 
that is be practiced. And it's interesting because we have the kid Luis Ma, uh, uh, Montanez, Montanez, right? I was telling yes. you, we were from Miami. Right. And when I first met him here, I said, hey, do you know who Willie Montanez is? And he goes, oh, of course I heard because he's also Puerto Rican. He's Puerto Rican. And that is one of the, like, the, the flashiest first bases of all time. Yeah. If you ever look up some Willie Montanez videos, you'll see that he was doing things that that people never did in baseball. And uh, and he was a precursor to what you guys are doing. Well, yeah, you know, you, you, you really have to go back to uh, the Indianapolis Clowns in yeah. the Negro Leagues. That's like the original of Savannah course. Bananas, yeah. truly. And there have been uh, unbelievable tricksters in our game before. But, you know, as I mentioned, it's usually frowned upon as you get to take a look at our unique seventh inning stretch. It is yellow. The whole stadium turns yellow. Lights are blaring. And a full capacity crowd. The 196th straight sellout of Grayson Stadium. All coming together as one to celebrate the love of fun and joy and entertainment. And the beautiful game of baseball, which has such deep roots throughout all of the United States of America, especially here in the South. And, and, and I just think that this is we wonderful. The so fact that you guys, we were able to walk now through the whole crowd waiting to come in. That was just, all of us that were major leaguers and stuff, we were like, this is so cool to get high five all these kids. Is this really something special? Uh, it's, it's, it's really cool to hear that as well. This is the... 82nd straight year here in Grayson Stadium that we have professional baseball and now Heath Bell full sprint coming in from left field and a power slide into the mound. Holy moly. He came into your screen at the last second like a lightning bolt and he's already warming up. Uh, he might have left a divot. I think <laughs> there was a divot there. The level of uh, Bill Murray and Caddyshack. <laughs> <laughs> that was serious. 310 pounds of, uh, of pure energy is Heath Bell. He's one of my favorite guys that oh. I ever had the pleasure to watch. He's, he's not only was an incredible closer, but just a character. You take a look at what was truly an illustrious career for the 45-year-old. He was drafted in the 69th round of that? the 1997 draft by the then Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Yep. Back when the draft was 69 rounds. It has shrunk oh so much since then. And he had an incredible career across 11 years, as you can see on the graphic to the right of him. Two times, two time NL Rollades reliever of the year. And a three time All Star. And in fact, kind of a little trivia the Rays are celebrating their 25th anniversary this season. Uh, that was like their first draft ever. That was back in the 97 draft right. before the 98 season. Right. So this is just putting together a minor league team of uh, players to, you know, to bring in, you know, and he never got up to the big leagues with, with uh, he got traded to the Mets before, the, uh, you know, to start out his real major league career. But yes. He was something else. Yeah, didn't break into the majors until 2004, played all the way through 2014. And he's got 7-8-9 in the Bananas lineup. Dakota McFadden, Bill Leroy, Jackson Olsen due to swing it here in the bottom of the seventh. Bananas lead 3-1. to one. That one chopped to Mike Morse across the diamond, and Ben Kozlowski can't snag it on the leaping attempt. And I'll tell you what, DMAC was tearing down that line. It was going to be bang-bang either way. It was going to be tough to begin with. Mike, the horse Morse with a cannon of an arm. One got away, got away from him a little bit. The old AWOL Nation sale. As it's going to be an E5. Bill Leroy introduces himself up to the plate, coming all the way from the stands. <laughs> I love that. Hey! That split. Split. Graced with the presence of our dear mascot here at Banana Land in the booth. He was running laps. He was you know, running out in the outfield, keeping himself in shape. Split, come come this way for the camera. You got we got a little two box going on. There yeah. you go, buddy. Strongest banana in all the land. Just barely gets into the camera. Heath Bell tries to pick off Malachi Mitchell, who's pinch running for the third time tonight. You can do so once every time through the order. 
Not real happy with Malachi, I'm gonna tell you, to be honest with you. Yeah. Kid's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little too fast for my takes. Well, the son of Dennis Mitchell, a gold medalist Olympian for the United States, as Malachi takes off, and that one's fouled off. Maceo Harrison has traded spots on the diamond, now coaching third base, to the delight of the fans over there. As Ma Malachi, I hear, eats all his vegetables, stays in good shape, loves fruit. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, he, he loves fruit. And uh, he loves to eat his bananas for potassium. And he's two for two on the night in stolen base attempts already. 2-2 <laughs> two, two count on the Nanners catcher. Flew out to center his first time. Malachi takes off again. Oh, That's a great piece Nelly. of hitting. Malachi trying to go first to third. Brian Barton will hit the cutoff man on a couple hops. And the inning winning run 90 feet away with no outs. It's not looking good, fellas. Heath Bell going to try and pick up his defense. Malachi is only on the bags because of an error. Wait, 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 wait. He's stealing second. And now Bill Leroy takes off for second, and it really doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. it takes the double you play want, out of want, effect. You want, uh, yeah, there's no out, so it doesn't matter. Right. Malachi Mitchell at third is the only man who does. That and one gets away. Malachi taking off. And that is going to be the end of the inning. Ends up being bang, bang at the dish. Only because Malachi let it be so, and the Bananas take a 4-1 lead. Malachi has scored the winning run in an inning three times tonight now. I told you, I'm not liking Mr. Malachi. <laughs> but no, what a talent to have that type of speed and baseball prowess, because it's not just, you know, you know, it's not just speed, it's knowing when to run, how to run the bases, and he's doing it at a, at a, at a world class. Level. Oh, yeah, and, and a five-year college guy, four at uh, Florida A&M, and then finished up at Savannah State right down the road from us here in our city by the sea. And we've got a little grandma celebration off coming home. And that just looks like, uh, oh, a little sprinkler at the end. Wait, what? All I know that since this is my first time in Savannah. Yes. People over 60 are having a whole lot of fun in this town. I don't know whether it's in the water, but there's a whole lot of dancing and silliness going on in Savannah by people over 60, which I'm happy because last year I turned 60. I mean 60. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to put that I am in. <laughs> well, yeah, this is your most glorious May decade eight. yet, Big That's up. what they're saying. I'm on there with Tom Cruise and a few other characters, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of say that okay, it's supposed to be my best decade. I'm going with that. Here's our third grandma. It looks like she's oh, here's a little slide. Little yeah, slide. a pinch of a stanky leg, I would say, and, <laughs> and a gritty at the end. And a gritty. She dropped the gritty on us. That's good stuff right there. What's going on there. And our final grandma of the night is Johnny Damon's mom. Is it really? That is Johnny Damon's mom with the walker, fired up to be here. And look at those arms go. She's like, I don't need no home plate. I don't need no stinking home plate. I already scored with that my son being Johnny Damon. What yeah, are right. About? Oh, terrific oh, work. Oh, oh, and here. Vincent Chapman joins her for a little duet at home plate. That's outstanding. That's awesome. And now the crowd finds out who it is at home plate. A raucous celebration. I want to tell you something, you know, um, being a, a board member in the Major League Baseball Alumni Association uh, in MLAM, Major League uh, Alumni Marketing for the last few, over 10 years. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, what a great job that MLB PAA does around not only the nation, but now the world globally. You know, they run over 300 clinics a year and and then creating, nice job. By yeah, that. shattered bat for Billy Burns and Dan Oberst runs Man, it down. That was not an easy play. Again, I will remark again that the athletes and the baseball acumen that is showing me by the banana baseball player. But getting back real quick to the PAA. Yes. Phenomenal job they do, you know, I want to thank uh, them all for putting this together for us to come out here.
Montanez down the left field line. Michael Deeb throws his glove away and barehands it. No glove necessary for Vitamin Deeb. And he hurls it to the crowd. I think a woman just made a fantastic tumbling catch and she's back on her feet with a souvenir. Wow, what a turn of events. Here it is right here. <laughs> Take, puts the glove off and says, I don't need no stinking glove. <laughs> and then throws it to the crowd. This is banana, this, this place is going bananas. <laughs> Outstanding. Reminiscent of one Kevin Mitchell. Yes. Who accidentally caught the ball with his bare hand. <laughs> right, on a full sprint, <laughs> overran sprint, it, and reached back. It, and played back in San Francisco, man. That's, that's one of the greatest highlights. Oh, one of the great baseball, excuse me, highlights. Now Bri Brian Barton. One for two on the day. A triple and a run scored back in the third. Flew out to shortstop his last time up. Right fielder for the MLB PAA. And loops that one into center field. How about a two for three night for Barton? Two bullets by Billy B. And best hair by in the Brian building. Barton. Yeah. Last thing I'll say with MLB PAA, if you get a chance, go on to their website. Obviously, MLBPAA.org. You'll just see a plethora of things. Maybe you might want to, you know, ask to have an event, you know, hosted in your area or something, and we're, we're, we're there. We have almost 4,000 former major leaguers. There's eight, uh, eight or 9,000 members uh, in the PAA. It's just a wonderful, wonderful job just celebrating their 40th anniversary uh, of existence. So uh, not only just to have former greats and, and alumni and major leaguers, but just the community service they do and they lend and charitable things that they do. So by all means, check them out. That wild pitch looks like one of our ball boys tried to take it from Bill Leroy, even though the ball was live. George Kataris at the dish. Two for two, two singles and an RBI. Excellent day at the plate. Started catching and has moved into the DH spot. Oh, nice throw. Well, the count even at two and two. Matt Salter is the new man on the mound for the Bananas. Even that right there, when you have a left-handed hitter, you don't realize how hard it is to throw back. I was a first baseman, so it was hard to throw to first behind the left-handed hitter, so really nice job. That was a nasty bender right there by Salter. Works around the two-out single, and the Bananas with a 4-1 lead will just need one run to win the eighth inning, and we will throw it down to the field because we have the man in the yellow tux himself, Jesse Cole. What a momentous day in Banana Land, my friend. Just walk me through your experience tonight. <laughs> you never would have imagined this, to see these guys out here on the field here in Savannah. You know, when we first started at the college summer baseball team, to see, you know, World Series players, all-stars, having fun and playing banana ball, you never could have written this up, Pico. Now, what is the wildest thing you've seen tonight thus far? And I know it's a hard thing to uh, oh, put a finger geez. on. Oh, jeez. I mean, you know, Jeremy Guthrie, what a start. You know, him going back and throwing that 200-foot pitch, you know, owning it, watching the guys coming up to bat, that the handstand competition between Bill and John Buck, the juggling bats. I mean, these guys have fully bought in, and it's a fun, it's a joy to watch. Hey, it's Big O up here. I popped in on the booth to, uh, to help out with the broadcast. I've been so impressed, Jesse and... Uh, and to, I can imagine just asking you a question about several years back when you started this, to, to fathom not only playing all these games, but also playing against former major leaguers. So well, where was that thought? Now you're also right here. Maybe next year going to be playing at Major League Ballpark. Yes, I mean, this is just the start for us. This is a first test. These guys get to hopefully uh, see what we're doing, and then we'll take this to Major League Stadiums with even more Major League players. So we're just so glad they're part of it and can't wait to see what's next. Always appreciate you, Jesse. Have a great rest of the night, my dear friend. Love you, Biko. Love you too, Jess. There goes Jesse Cole, part owner of this ball club with his wife, Emily. Started it up in 2016, and it was a great question by you, O, is that one's going to be dunked into left. Jackson Olsen digging for two. He's going to have him. Double for the Nanners third baseman, who's now one for two on the night. And the inning winning run in scoring position with nobody gone. Now Dalton Malden. Two base sprint his first time was pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell, who ended up scoring the walk off run back in the fourth. Put the bananas up two to one at the time. Heath Bell back out on the mound. That's a beautiful front door bender, doesn't get the call. 
in his heyday, really lived on that fastball. High 90s, came close to 100. And there's a heater right there. Kozlowski's got a long run for it. It's gonna be a tough play. Brian Barton running in, can't snag it. Jackson Olsen is gonna hold up at third. And now two men in scoring position with nobody out. Bermuda Triangle right there. Out that was shallow a right. One. Yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do about that one. Uh, oh my goodness. A whole lot. The rest is. Yes, sir. It oh is time my. for Dakota Stilts All Britain. You have no idea how excited I am about this. Because as a kid, I always was fascinated by by the, in the circus, the, the, the guys on stilts. I just always thought, like, how do they pull this off? And this guy can hit on stilts. Trying for his first walk off in his illustrious career. This is his sixth at bat. One for six thus far. 0 for two this year. Couple strikeouts. He's, one, he's one for two? Yeah, uh, 0, 0 for two this year. One for six in his career. Is that what's cranked down the third baseline? Fair! Off Mike Morse, who thought it was foul himself. And the Bananas are going to walk the inning off. Got a walk off. A man on filth just walked off the inning. I don't think I ever, in my 20 year of broadcasting, <laughs> would I ever think that I was going to say that a man on filth was going to walk off an inning. 10 feet, 9 inches tall, stilts with the biggest swing in his illustrious career. Gives the Bananas a 5-1 to one lead, and here's the Ladies young professor to explain the ninth inning. Ladies and gentlemen, from Potassium Enthusiasts here live in Grayson Stadium, that sound means that this is the final inning of the game, which means that every run counts for a point. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet. It all comes down to this. And this is really the most important rule in banana ball because the former major leaguers are down four points going into the ninth inning. But all they need is four runs to tie the game, five runs to take a lead. And actually, in night two of the tour, the party animals were down five to one, scored four in the ninth, won the game in showdowns. Wow. That is a great advent of this game because when you think about it, you know, the game was blowing completely in the bananas way but now nobody should leave the game right you're, you're going to stay to the end in, in a game that seems to be kind of you know ruled by one side could be changed dramatically in one half inning and they're going to have to do it off of dj the invader you take a look at his stats averages three minutes and eight seconds in innings or uh, minutes per inning rather across really? the nine frames he's thrown he's very efficient only a couple strikeouts, only two ball four sprints. The ball's been put in play an awful lot against him. Can I ask a question, though? Yeah, of course. Um, does he know that he already got off of his fat boy motorcycle? <laughs> that, that, or, or he just doesn't realize that he's gotten already off of his motorcycle? No, he's a, he's a mysterious man. We've never oh, seen his face. Oh. He showed up to the tryout. He told us his name was DJ. That's the only information we got besides for the arsenal of pitches which he gave me. And of course, we saw on the radar gun, he hit low to mid 90s. He claims he's got the best changeup in the galaxy. The galaxy, this guy is a intergalactic pitcher. Well, it seems that way at least. He'll work a slider and curveball in as well. And DJ, five earned runs across his nine innings pitch, but four of them in one of his outings really spoiled the season stats as, as will happen when, when you're so early into a tour. It's going to be 10-1-2 for the former major leaguers. Kozlowski, Descalzo, and Damon do to swing it. Ben 0 for 2, couple strikeouts. One swinging, one looking. Ahead 2-0. Oh. Where did this kid play his college ball? At SpaceX? Was it? No? <laughs> yeah, that's right. For Elon Musk and company. <laughs> I don't even know if he's a real human. See, here's another complaint I have. This game has been a little bit skewed. I think this guy's AI. This guy could be not even a human. Well, you know, that's okay. I don't know where a strike was called in there, but it's going to be 3-1. They all looked outside of the zone from up here, but we don't have the view Vincent Chapman does. And that one's going to be popped left side playable. of the field. Michael Deeb in, Ryan Cox out, and Vitamin Deeb there for out number one. Former major leaguers down to their final two outs. We go to the top of the order. 
Daniel Descalzo, the shortstop. 0 for 3 on the night. Strikeout, ground out, pop out. We need a four spot, at least a tie, right? That's a fact. All right. And that one just misses the inside corner. Back up the middle, off the glove of the invader. That's it's going to be an started. infield single. Yeah, well, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. My pick for the MLB PAA's MVP of the game gets his first knock. I, I think I overheard the pitchers yelling, danger, Will Robinson, something like that, I think. Again, I think he's a <laughs> robot. I, I don't know what's going on with this game, but. Now Johnny Damon, the DH, 0 for 2 on the day. Couple ground outs and a one base sprint. That one stroked off the mid of Danny Oberst. He's gonna pick the ball up, fire to second for one, get to Scalzo. That and was a bullet. Laser Johnny beam. Damon can still swing the bat at 48 years old. Holy cow. Ends up being a pretty bizarre 3-6 fielder's choice. Now Damon on first. And Johnny Gomes, well check that. John Buck, the last hope, and Attaboy, he keeps Johnny. this thing alive. We, uh, a bloop and a blast, a bloop and a blast will tie this right now. Buck two for four on the day. I think we got, listen, if we get a hit right here, I don't wanna, I don't wanna just jinx it, but maybe you got Mike Morris on deck. It's the exact man you would want in this situation is the aforementioned Johnny Gomes now steps into the righty batter's box. Come on, Johnny, get on base, base it, and give a chance for a walk-off inning tie game, Grand Slam. How you like me now? Chop to the left oh, side. Jackson God. Olsen between the legs across the diamond. And the Bananas end up winning it five to one. The former major leaguers, one man away from getting the tying run up to the dish. Here's Jesse Cole. Jesse Cole himself, a 5-1 victory for, for the Bananas, the fastest banana ball game of all time, an hour and 34 minutes. An excellent first contest of what will be three across the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by Zappos between the Nanners and the MLB PAA. And now the sky is ablaze with fireworks. Arrestes Destrade, I can't thank you enough for spending so much time with me in the booth, man. This has been a pleasure both uh, to be a part of this and to come up here with you. Uh, you're doing a great job. Uh, I, this is only going to get bigger and better and better and, and just be a joy to support and watch and grow over the years because this is healthy baseball for the United States of America and hopefully internationally in the coming years. So continued success and what a fun way to watch a baseball game. We will see you in April 28th down in Tampa at George M. Steinbrenner Field. Okay, I've got to take over on play-by-play -play for the fireworks. The Big O, great seeing you, Big Tiger. Now, to the, to the sky we go. It is red, white, and blue after some reaping, weeping willows early on. It is patriotic 
right now. Oh, a nice heart up high in the sky. Another one, although a little bit disfigured. It sparks down low like an ax striking some iron when you were trying to get a piece of wood. They continue to sparkle, kind of like pop rocks inside your mouth. Oh, a smiley face up high. The artistic creativity on these fireworks, absolutely superb. No hair on the head, but I'm not going to knock it for that. On that one, not really a smile, kind of a flat mouth. There's a good little inversion on it. OK, now some puffs going down and a big old twinkle. Those fall down like some uh, some rocks, but the rocks have parachutes on them, okay? It's not just a rock falling down because that would be far too fast. There is their classic weeping willow. It envelops the entirety of the sky. A masterful firework. Now sparklers down low, darting off in every which way. Kind of like you run in on a pack of deer out in the woods and their white tails go up because they've been spotted and they don't go in one direction. They just kind of sprint off every which way to try and find each other after the danger is uh, no longer a possibility. Now we've got some bronze and gold down low, a big yellow jobber up top. Beautiful burnt orange going with some pink down low. The sparklies continue to fall out of the sky, arcing like a fireball coming from a trebuchet or a or possibly, well, no, I'm going to stick with a, oh, yeah, catapult. That's what I wanted to say. In a battle in the Middle Ages, a siege of a city. Now fireflies with a little bit of a flashbang effect. And then a thousand tiny little pebbles tossed into a mountain pond. It wasn't moving water. This was still water in the pond. And it wasn't big rocks. It was like he grabbed a, a big hand of gravel and just tossed it in there. It was a bajillion little sparkles. Down low, the twinkles keep going. Up high, a weeping willow turning a little bit into kind of a dandelion. Bunch of seeds. Another willow cascading down from the sky. Oh, two for one up top. We've got a bunch of a bunch of uh, insects darting around looking for light. Someone has swatted at them with their hand, and they are dispersing in every which way. Now we have some meteoric shots going to the sky like shooting stars turning into a barrage of color and shapes and sizes. Yellow, orange, blue, pink, green. Down low, they continue to disperse in little bug-like flying patterns. Up high, a big pink with a little bit of a trail behind it. And now some twinkly boys falling out of the sky like shooting stars with a little twinge of a flashbang effect to them. Fireflies that have been fed too much caffeine. A beautiful pink and green. The original Syracuse University colors. I don't know why we ever changed. Now purple and orange down low. Yellow up high in the sky. Another weeping willow takes over. Red, white, and blue down below. Sparkling at a ferocious pace. Big old pink turning into white. Blue goes into white. Many colors, many shapes, many sizes of fireworks in the sky. Red, white, and blue down low. Pink kind of arcing in a bit of a crabgrass type deal up top. And there's a palm tree that breaks into a willow with still live fireworks falling on the Grayson Stadium surface. Now it's weeping willows all over the sky. A bit of a palming effect as well. Oh, now it's full palm tree season. Blasts all over the sky. It is an absolute mass of light and fire. This is as much mass as I've seen in a fireworks show in my illustrious fireworks broadcasting career. Now a tremendously high one, kind of arching down like a miraculous multi-thousand dollar chandelier. Now green and yellow, some blue as well. We'll throw in some pink. Give me some silver. Classic looks arcing out like a bunch of fish in a school and you dove towards the middle of them and they disperse in every which way. Here comes the finale. It is miraculous. Every color, shape, and size of firework you could ever desire. Green, yellow, pink, blue, purple, silver, azul, teal. The sky is enveloped. A pink, a blue, a pink, and it has finished. Thank you for
all your support. We're just getting started. We'll see you outside. My sources tell me a firework may or may not have blown up on the wall as you take a look at a completely dark racing stadium here inside Daffin Park. And our drone gets knocked by what must have been some kind of buzzer. Maybe a vulture up there in the sky. It gotta be something big to do that much damage to our banana panorama. Wow, truly a miraculous fireworks show. After the big O, Orestes Estrade, leaves me in the booth. The Bananas win this one five to one. Pico Scala back up in the Bananas fan cave. A really momentous day here in Bananas history as the major leaguers fall at the hand of the Nanners. But the show is not done yet. I have my man on the ground, Mr. Josh Tolevsky with Henry, our Roman cameraman, creaming out into the party plaza. We'll check in on him. He'll try and grab some bananas, some major leaguers as well in just a little bit. Uh, it was really close early. J Jeremy Guthrie was uh, terrific starting for the MLB PAA team. He ends up going three innings of one unearned run ball. Christian Dearman, terrific for the Nanners, goes five and two thirds. Bill Lee pitches for both sides. Uh, it, was, it was a fantastic night overall. The game was once tied when uh, we finished up the third inning. It was one to one. And then the Bananas walk off four innings out of the last six and take it five to one. Okay, Mr. Josh Tolevsky, our banana ball statistical savant in the party plaza. What's going on out there outside the main gate of Grayson Stadium, Josh? players I mean Biko it was an incredible game what are your initial thoughts from tonight all right not sure if Biko's got me but we are having a blast out here I see Dan Oberst and let's go talk to Dan real quick Dan Oberst signing a couple autographs for the kids Dan tonight was really special playing against the players alumni what does it mean to you to be able to play against guys you probably grew up watching and, you know, stuff like that? Yeah, it means the world, you know. I mean, while I'm on the field, it, it, it almost feels like I'm living in a movie. And then the fact that I get to come to the post-game party plaza and have someone like yourself, Josh, interview me is really like a dream come true. Dan, let me tell you, you're a sweetheart. No, I'm, you I'm, you're a teddy bear, Dan. Now, let me tell you. What is the biggest takeaway that you're going to have from getting to play against those MLB alumni? I mean, we're just changing the game. You know, all those guys loved it. They all bought in. Nothing but good things to say about all them. They all had a blast. Hey, my man, let's get this guy on camera real quick. How do you feel about tonight's game? You're on national television. Good. 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 It's good. Good. Oh, my God. Mr. Electric, right here next to me. Now you started tonight's game. I mean, another great performance against some former pros. Tell me about your night and what it was like to pitch again. I think I blocked out out there. That was so much fun. It was the most fun I've ever had in my life. Those guys didn't stop smiling the whole time. I don't know if it was because of my dance moves or because they were having so much fun. But man, the electricity was brought tonight and Grayson Stadium, you provided all of it. Let's go, baby. <laughs> yeah, and Christian, I mean, you guys got to spend the entire day yeah. around these guys. I mean, what have you learned? What kind of wisdom did they impart on you? What are you going yeah. to take away from this experience tonight? I'm going to take away that you never know when it'll be your last time on that field. So you might as well go all out and have the best time in the whole entire world. Christian, awesome work tonight. Great job. I mean, just an absolutely, just another incredible performance. Bring, Bring it in here, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. man. Love you, Christian, Love man. You, man. You go have fun. Oh, my goodness. Biko, I mean, just another incredible game. The alumni really brought it, and I'm telling you, I'm looking around scouring for the alumni, but I'm not finding them at the current moment. We've got a young fan tied up in the microphone cord here. DJ the Invader handing out some high fives as we keep moving here through the plaza. Another great game tonight here in Grayson Stadium, Biko. We're here 
about to be joined with Ryan Cox, giving out some high fives. Ryan, you had another great performance tonight, a couple trick plays out there on the field. I mean, what's it like going up against some of those MLB players alumni? I mean, you watch those guys growing up, you model your game after a lot of them. To not only share the same field, but be able to play against them is one of the coolest things, if not the coolest thing I've ever done on a baseball field. Yeah, and I mean, you played them game one tonight. We've still got two more games against the players alumni. So in terms of the next two games, what are you really looking forward to from those two? I'm looking forward to see their dance moves. The 3-2-2 just keeps getting bigger, bigger. They're at bats. Their entrances tonight were electric. I'd like to see a couple more trick plays. Push that a little bit. Uh, the shortstop, Descalvo, went behind his back tonight. That was cool. But just more trick plays. Plus it. Ryan, I think maybe you could give them a couple pointers in the trick play department. I mean, what do you think about that? You going to hold a little private workout for everybody? I don't think I'm qualified to shine their shoes. Oh but we'll share, we're share, the, share the same field. Yeah, that's awesome. Ryan, thanks for joining me tonight. You keep having fun out in the party plaza, big guy. Sure, Josh, keep up the push-ups, dude. That was electric. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Ryan Cox, of course, talking about my push-ups against Mike Vavasis last night. Uh, I'm proud to say 31 big ones. Uh, I really struggled trying to get up on number 32. Uh, I was pulled up by my shirt, but I'm not I'm not going to count it. I'm, I'm a man of honor, integrity, and uh, we're all about accurate statistics here with the bananas. So going to keep moving through the plaza here. Oh, my gosh. Stilts out there. Took another at bat. Let's see if we can get with stilts really, really quick. A man of many talents, and I'll talk to this young man right here. Young man, what's your name? Hudson. And what was your favorite part about coming to the Bananas game tonight? Um, to see the game. To see the game. What was the funniest part of the night? Mm, I, I don't know. You don't know. Okay, well, did you have a good time? Yes. Oh, yeah. Did you enjoy watching stilts out there? Yes. Awesome stuff. Can you give me a Go Bananas? Go Bananas. Go Bananas. Thank you for joining me. Oh, my gosh. And I'm here again with stilts. We spoke with him in Jacksonville. We've got him again. Stilts, we've seen you on the mound recently, but you got back in the batter's box tonight. Walk us through that. Um... Dude, I mean it's, it's the same run as every as all the time, man. I, I'm in the I'm in the, the, the dugout there. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm thinking to myself, just calm down. I'm nervous. It's every time. As soon as I step foot on the uh, on the dirt out there, man, I was good to go. I'm got in the box. I was comfortable, man. And I, I made it happen. And, and does it feel any different to go up against the MLB players alumni as opposed to the traditional party animals you're usually facing? Okay, so I, I think every baseball player's dream was to make it to the big leagues, right? This is way better in my opinion, Ike. We're going to play big leaguers. I'm going to get a hit off of big leaguers on stilts, man. Like, what, where is that supposed to happen? <laughs> Banana Land is a magical place, stilts. I tell you what, I mean, great job tonight. It was a great night in Grayson Stadium all together. Thank you for joining me. Absolutely, Josh. Thank you for having me, brother. Yeah, of course. Oh, my goodness. More great stuff from Still. Still trying to look around, finding some of the players, alumni, and I'm honestly not sure if we're going to get them out here. Biko, we just spoke to a lot of guys out in the party plaza. It's been a blast. I'm going to throw it back up to you. I'm signing off for the night. Go Bananas, buddy. Okay, you couldn't hear anything I was saying, and that's because I'm my own audio, audio guy up here, and, and I was so tuned in to Josh that I didn't turn myself on. Okay, I'll recap what I just said. Thank you to Dan Oberst, Christian Dearman, Ryan Cox, Dakota stilts Britain, Hudson, the other young chap that Josh got out there. Thank you to, of course, Mr. Tolevsky. Great work out in the party plaza as well as down on the field. Some shout-outs before we close this thing down and, uh, and, and shut it down for the evening. Our drone flying extraordinaire, I saw the 
chat going absolutely crazy for Nick Keldy. Man, oh man, that fireworks uh, action with the first person drone was mind boggling. I cannot wait to watch it back, dude. That was insane. Our, our fan cam, Gabrielle, I think Dakota was working on that as well. Thank you, Dakota, for being a utility. The Swiss Army knife of Bananas TV tonight on the wireless cam. Roman all around this place. Henry, he was the reason why you saw Josh and heard Josh out there in the party plaza and, and all of Mr. Tulevsky's hits. Henry was the uh, really the crown jewel behind that. Ben, our center field cameraman, terrific. Clayton down on high home. Uh, Keegan on the third base camera. Emerson on the first base camera across the diamond. You all absolutely smashed it tonight. Thank you so much. Michael, the best score bug man in graphics land. Julia throwing all the lower thirds and slabs that we could ever want graphics wise as well. Takes two to tango. You both were terrific. On replay, Jalen. Oh my gosh, you really knocked it out of the park as per usual. Big pregame show for you. You kept it up during our ball game as well. You're a superstar. Our technical director, Griffin Ellis. Our uh, coordinating producer, Chad Reese. And our director, Chris Haynes. They, those are really the straws that stir the drink behind the scenes. You guys are all superstars. And thank you very much to Kyle Lewix for hopping on the broadcast. Alex Wilson for getting mic'd up. And Orestes Destrada for hopping on the mic as well. I'm Biko Scala saying so long for now. We will be off on Sunday, back in action on Monday night. It'll be a 6.30 p.m. Eastern pregame, 7 p.m. first pitch just like tonight, and the kilts will be back at it. March 13th, baby, St. Paddy's Day in Banana Land. It'll be the 11th game of the World Tour, 10th game between the Nanners and the Party Animals. Uh, an enormous thank you to the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association. So excited to resume this three-game series on April 28th down in Tampa at Georgia. Jim Steinbrenner Field with uh, a lot of the guys you saw tonight as well as some reinforcements and, and some big names that will um, will release in the future and it's going to be really exciting to do so. It was a blast tonight. Really historic night in Banana Land. The fastest game in Banana Ball history. An hour and 34 minutes to get nine innings in. That's a testament to the former major leaguers and our bananas across the diamond. 5-1 win for the fellas from Savannah. We will see you on the Flippity Flop Monday night, 6 p.m. So check that, 6.30 pregame, 7 p.m. first pitch. And, of course, we'll see you later.